Hello and welcome to Tushka Training. We're back in Reaper and we're in the second of our Voodoo series covering the Reaper preferences. We're looking at project preferences today. Now this is different to project settings, which is there, and we'll discuss why in a moment. Uh, when creating new projects, use the following project file as a template. Uh, you can go and look at the Reaper cookbook. Uh, series of videos that will tell you about project templates uh, this is where you can set a default one so when you create a new project it will load the project template this is not the same as project settings save as default project settings button here that will just save these settings as default for every project right load template project when starting up and not loading last project this basically will use this project template if you don't have load last project on startup here so when you start up reaper it will load the template if you don't have a last project ticked prompt to save on new project uh, this is a default in most applications uh, when you create a new project or you close the current project it'll ask you if you want to save the current project something i hate nice to be able to turn it off open properties on new project this and a bunch of the other preferences is why we've called this the reaper voodoo series a lot of people get scared by the preferences because of things like this someone has actually said to me recently where's the properties i can't find the properties what's that tick box for uh it's named wrong it opens your project settings so this opens project settings when you create a new project again project settings just to make that clear that's what that does it's named wrong that's all uh, project loading look for project media items in project directory before qualified path now all this does is when you create a, a, a new project or you save a new project it'll give you the option to create a, a project folder and it's always good to make a new folder for every project what this does is it will always look in the project folder first for media files um, so if you've uh, moved media files to your project folder so that you can you can save it and zip it to somebody else or whatever this will look for the project files in that folder first uh, always good to leave ticked doesn't do any harm prompt when files are not found on project load always good to leave this ticked as well this brings up a little box that will ask you if you want to auto search or browse a particular file when it can't find that file on a project load up uh, show load status and splash while loading projects uh, in the original Voodoo series, we we uh, discussed the show splash screen on startup, and this using your own image as a splash screen here. That works in conjunction with this tick box, which will put a status bar at the bottom of that splash screen that shows you how your load is doing, what media files are currently loading, and so on. Um, project saving, save project file references with relative path names. And this basically just makes your save file, uh, your project file, a little bit smaller and a little bit quicker to load if you're using media files in your project directory so if you've saved um, media to your project directory rather than actually having the full path name to the folder and the, the drive and so on and so on it will just have a relative path name so it will always look in the um in the project folder anyway however if you've got media in a separate folder or on a separate drive or whatever they will always have their absolute path names so again something that i just leave ticked and not worry about uh, when overwriting project file rename old project to rpp dash back worth having this is a backup file so when you save a project uh, the last version it will save to rpp uh, dash back always worth doing uh, you can keep multiple backup files if you want by ticking this you can time stamp the multiple backup files so each uh, backup will have a time on it um, so you know when when that backup was created and you can cre keep undo histories for each backup as well now if you remember again back in the original voodoo uh, video we discussed um, being able to load undo histories and saving undo histories with project files if you need to know more about them you can go back and watch the original video but you can save multiples of those with each backup file now this here is your auto save settings not something i use but if you do use it this is where you set it up you've got your amount of time here between auto saves uh, you can hit the tick box and save to time stamped file in a project directory so it will time stamp the uh the save file uh, to time stamped file in additional directory so you can create a directory here by browsing to it here uh, and it will create a, a save file in that particular directory you can save to the project file that's not recommended by me it's not recommended by the developers and we're just going to pretend that doesn't exist uh, save Save undo history rpp dash undo if enabled in general prefs again uh, what we discussed here was the save undo history 
Okay, uh, the next thing we're going to cover is the track send defaults in the project setting, uh, project preferences. Uh, you can decide what your default gain is for your uh, for your volume on your newly created tracks. I have mine set to zero here, as you can see. I'm going to remove these tracks quickly. Now you can have uh, default visible envelopes here. Uh, I'm going to tick pan on as well just to show you what it does. As you can see, those uh, envelopes are now visible. Um, it's set to linear here, like so. So when I create a, a point in the envelope, it's automatically using linear. You can set this to square, slow uh, start end, fast start, fast end, or bezier. We'll cover those shapes more in uh, the Reaper cookbook so you can go back and watch those videos now one thing to remember here is if you do change the default here um and create new points it won't work now that's actually it's not a bug um basically you just have to create a new envelope before you see the uh, default changing that's that's all that is so it's it's not actually broken it just you just have to actually create a new envelope uh, the default automation mode here is the automation mode for these envelopes the default automation mode setting uh, which is one of these settings here um, you've got uh, trim read read touch right latch again something we'll be covering the cookbook you can go and watch those arm new envelopes so basically the envelopes are armed to work with uh, uh, different ways of recording them um, by default you can turn that off and on there uh, default ha uh, track height in new projects uh, if we uh, change that there like so on um, it won't actually do anything and that's because it's only in new projects it's not new tracks as you can see it's when you create a new project what the default track height is i always have it set to small because it's easier to change those sizes at a later date um showing mixer basically decides whether your uh, your view will be visible in the mixer down here um, I've got my mixer docked, which, which we discussed on uh, some of the uh, Reaper cookbook series as well. Uh, main parent send decides whether it's sent to the master. Free item positioning um, is something we'll discuss at a later date in uh, the Reaper cookbook as well. If you want it turned on by default, this is the tick box here you have to hit. Um, not something I want to cover too much in this preference series. Uh, record arm decides basically whether a newly created track will be record armed by default. Uh, some people want it record armed like so by default. Uh, and this is uh, your default record setup as well, um, which is the record setup you will know uh, from the cookbook series when we cover recording in the cookbook series. Um, the next is your uh, project defaults for send track and hardware outputs. Your send default gain uh, is here, um, which is uh, if you create a send, uh, which I will do quickly now, which is this gain here. Hardware output default gain. Uh, now you might want to change this. Uh, I'm not going to show you a, a hardware setup here at the moment, um, but if, if you've uh, got a particular um, out of the box setup where you need a particular decibel um, range going to a particular piece of hardware. You might want to change this so it's uh, it's set up lower or higher. Um, send hardware output default mode. You can change your your post and pre fader here, um, which is your default. You can always don't forget you can always change these after the fact uh, in your settings here via your. Uh, your routing box per channel. You can always save these, uh, you can always change those settings anyway. So it's, it's not something I tend to mess with in the uh, preferences, I've got to be honest. Uh, send, sends MIDI by default. Now, uh, you just saw me create a send here. Um, basically, you can turn the MIDI and the audio off and on uh, per send there anyway. So for me, I just leave them and I change them as I need them. Again, same with the audio here, uh, something that I'll actually change on a per send basis. If you need them all to have no MIDI or all to have no audio, that's where you can set the prefs there. Right, onto the media item defaults. Uh, defaults for media items, create automatic fade in, fade out for new items uh, with this length here. Uh, this again, on my particular Reaper, I have a button up here that allows me to turn this off and on. So not important to me, but you might just want in the one particular setting. Again, I have it on a toggle button up here so I can see it off and on 
on the actual toolbar at the top. Uh, overlap and crossfade items when splitting length. Um, basically, when you split items um, and they overlap, this is the length of crossfade that will be created between the overlapping items. Again, this is um, something that you're going to set and forget. It's an actual length. Um, it's not something that's that important, to be honest, to me personally, uh, but some people will be changing this quite a lot, I expect. So that's the setting there for overlapping items fading, uh, cross fading, I should say. Um, default fade in, fade out shape. You've got your various shapes here. Um, default crossfade shape. You've got this here. Um, don't forget as well that you've got your crossfade editor now as well. Something else we'll be um, covering in the Reaper cookbook. These are just defaults. Again, not something I mess with because I change them on a per crossfade and a per fade uh, basis myself. Uh, and I tend to never use a default shape anyway. Um, I'll always change it. Uh, but per fade and per crossfade uh, right click on crossfade sets fade shape for only one side of the crossfade shift toggles again not something i use but this is this is basically will allow you to change the shape of one side of the crossfade to a different shape um, so rather than them being the, the the same shape on both sides you can actually change one particular side to a different shape uh, enable automatic fade in fade out and auto crossfade for midi note velocity um, basically what this does is it will allow you to use your fades that you've created on the velocity on midi items um, something that I do have ticked. I haven't ticked on this particular setup yet because this is not my default Reap setup, uh, Reaper setup. Uh, loop source for imported items. Uh, basically, when you import an item, this will loop the source so that if you drag the right edge, it will loop the item. Uh, great if you're working with loops. Uh, great, great for a bunch of stuff, actually. Uh, if you don't have this ticked, then when you pull the right edge, it will just actually extend the item and you'll have a bunch of empty space. Uh, same for MIDI items. Items here uh, you drag the right edge and it will loop the MIDI item uh, loop source for recorded items so if you record something if you drag the right edge it will loop it um, time selection auto punch audio recording creates loopable section so if you actually auto punch in via a time selection into a track when you're recording it will actually make a loopable section of that that file if you have it unticked then it will record it straight in and it will just be a, a straight audio file um in in the actual file that you already have um that pretty much covers our project preferences um i hope you enjoyed this tutorial and we'll see you on the next one <laughs>